Hello, and welcome to another episode of Turning Sparkly Cardboard Sideways. My name's Jimmy, Bancroft is behind the camera, and right here will be my personal phone number, 859-279-2405. If you have any questions, concerns, critiques on any deck profile or battles we post, uh, please feel free to send me a message, or if you just want to say hi, or share some of your deck tech, deck list ideas, please send me a message, and I'll try to reply as quickly as possible. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back to another, actually Fluff, you want this for one time? I don't care. Well, he doesn't care, all right, so. I mean, if you want me to. I will. You're always complaining. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a unique Hey, little bud, come over here and do the intro. Fluff. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Attack on Productions. We've got Jimmy here. Jimmy had earlier stated that he was going to do um, a constant update on the baby deck profile. So Jimmy, we're going to let you take it away, but don't forget to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Bancroft cheats. Bancroft what are you talking cheat. about? Bancroft cheats a lot. Let's get your deck. Hey, uh, what, what's that? What's that thing that Gotenk says about his ghost tokens? Uh, if you forgot. if you watch our duel, like, this guy yeah. did it right the second time. Um, Let's get into yeah, your deck. Second time. Speaking of second I, times. Yeah. So this is a updated uh, list for baby. Uh, a lot of stuff changed. A lot of ratios. New cards have been added, but the pretty much the main core of the deck is the same. So I won't spend a lot of time going over each specific card. Um, so I assume you know what the baby leader does. Uh, activates planet tuffle from your deck. Draw one on attack. Awaken at two. Or three. My bad. Four. Wow. I can't talk. Overlord. Draw a card. Activate main. Search uh, top three for a counter. Pitch the rest of the bottom of the deck and then pitch a card from uh, your hand to the bottom of the deck. Really good for setting up bottom deck plays. Planet tuffle. Reduces all of your counters by one. Really nice. And also can set up for some plays. So I was describing uh, what what I call tuffle setups, where you're searching top three on the backside of your leader every time, and these keep pitching cards to the bottom. So you can actually cycle cards from your hand that you want to see later in the game, put it on the bottom of the deck, keep activating main on leader, and you will see a lot of turns with this deck. You will have a lot of turns, just because of the nature of uh, the way the deck plays. So eventually those cards you're going to put on the bottom are going to end up back on top of the deck. So early game, like turn one, you can pitch like a grade eight baby to the bottom of the deck. And then by the time you get to the turn where you want to play it, it'll be back on top. So uh, figure out your math, work it out, play test a lot, and you can start doing some really nice double setups. And then go play blackjack. And then go play blackjack. <laughs> New card to the deck, UI Goku. So I was really reluctant to add cards like this to the deck uh, just because I don't want a lot of attacks go through. I'd just rather have negates. If you're more comfortable with just negating, these can just become, uh, um, fill out some of your numbers or these can become like Weiss's Quertion or something like that. But I, uh, I really like this card because when I go onto the offense, having a 15 cage wall one, basically a, a super combo is ridiculous. Uh, especially on like a big ape swing. In my match with Bancroft, if I had one of these in hand and energy open, he probably wouldn't have won because I was he won by like one card. One I only card had combo. two more cards in my hand to combo, so yeah, I would not have won yeah. that one. Yeah. So, uh, I really like this card. I think it fits really well in the deck. If you're more comfortable with having a negate, just run a negate over this. Super combos. Two Vegeta quality super combos. And two Zamasu. Uh, again, since I'm more willing to let attacks go through with this deck instead of negating. Zamasu is technically a negate, if you really think about it. Because you just combo with it and say, the rest of that card, it can't attack. Yeah, it threw me off in our duel. Yeah. So, uh, like, I have I, I have really, really like this card. Uh, another option you have is running the Zeno super combo. Because that allows you to tap out on uh, turns that you want to play a boonie. Or turns that you want to play your great ape and tap out with it, you can just run the Zeno Super Combo just to restand. And also you can charge cards that you want to use later. So if you don't want to do Tuffle setups, you can just charge it, use Zeno to pick it back up. Does the Zeno 1 restand a card? I know you play it, I thought it played in Russ. I, I'm pretty sure it comes in an active mode. I'll Either that or I've been cheating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th this is what I like uh, just because Vegeta can set up bottom deck plays, but play whatever you like. 
find a good super combo that works yeah. for you. One of the most clutch cards I have played in this deck. I had had my eye on this card when I was building this deck, and I was thinking, okay, Kuitsukai is going to be an issue. Uh, Ribrian's going to be an issue because I don't really like dropping cards. So I was trying to figure out ways to get around that, and Twisted Sister just fixes all of those issues. So if you don't know what she does, she's a counterplay for one, uh, and then auto, draw a card. Then you choose one of your opponent's cards in the drop area and shuffle it into the deck. So this is relevant in almost every single matchup I have played with this deck. True. Any good blue deck, or sorry, yellow blue deck mostly will have uh, what apes and yeah. most green decks so, will have ruby ends. So. so green, get rid of ruby ends, get rid of uh, go tanks pieces. So if they only have like one trunks in their drop area, you can drop this, shuffle it into their deck, then KO their uh, or bounce their uh, six drop go tanks, and now they can't get that trunks back or whatever card. Uh, put Kuitsukai back into the deck. Um, earlier today, I played against a Rainbow Vegeta deck that was running the uh, Strength of Legends cards. And I was able to put back one of their color cards in the drop area back into their deck, and they couldn't play the, uh, the big Goku the next turn. Like, this card has been relevant in every single matchup I've played, and I will probably side, more, side two more of these just because of how good it's been. And also, you don't have to activate the counterplay. You can just play this from your hand outright on your turn. So pretty much any card they put in the drop area is not safe unless they force it into, like, a combo. Like, a Gotenks player can, you know, keep the Ribriands in hand, then combo them off on their turn and not play anything and then activate from the drop area. But it makes it forces uh, your opponents into bad plays if they don't really... Uh, if they know this is coming. One Champa, pretty self-explanatory. Wait a second, that's not the secret duper uh, duper. Uh, 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 don't don't worry about it. I just wanted this deck to be shiny, not French. So it's legal. Yeah, this is actually a legal list. Uh, <laughs> four Abuni or three? Wow, I cannot talk today, man. What did you What did you put in my coffee, Bancroft? You were driving, so you received the coffees first. Let's see your deck profile. <laughs> so three Abuni. Self-explanatory. I ran two in the original list. He was super relevant in every matchup because, of course, he is. So I ran him at three. And the reprint in them. Yeah, the reprint. I'm, I'm hype about that. I only own three, so that'd be nice. Uh, Since being this card has never been relevant in this deck. I think I've only used it once, and it didn't do anything for me. I want to run it just because it's Bean, just because it's good. If you don't, if you run blue and don't run bean, you're probably bad. But I might cut this down to like two, maybe. Yeah, you charged against me. I, I, I in my matchup against Jake, I charged all three beans. Oh wow. Yeah, I opened with two in hand, and I pulled one off my life, and I charged it. So I might cut that down to two, just to fill out some other ratios. I don't know. Maybe just cut it all, uh, all together, just to get closer to fifty. Run one of these. I, I have. Uh, did not see it today at the tournament, but this has been insanely good. Uh, aside two more, but Otto, when you play him for the next turn, uh, your opponent cannot attack uh, unless they place a two or more into the bottom of the deck. Uh, and then minus one, draw two, bottom deck one, good for setting up bottom decks. Then the uh, minus two, wipe the field ignoring barrier back to their hand. So. This is great against Go Tanks because you just wipe their field. They don't run a lot of cheap cards, so they usually will have to play two of their six drop Go Tanks out just to get an attack off. So this has been super clutch. I uh, only run one in the main just because I was clocking my hand up too much and I was getting really frustrated with it, but I side two more. So getting to the counters, desperate measures, not much to say about it. I bumped this up by one just because of how good this card is. Uh, I, I haven't used it a lot, but when I have, it's won me the game. That's not a shiny. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> grade 8, baby. This card's great. Only only run two. I side a third. Uh, not much to say about it. Baby's good. Now, the card that almost got me the game against Bancroft <sighs> hit. This card is so, so good in this deck. It's a two-drop. Uh, because of Planet Tuffle. He bounces a 5-drop coming out. 
and also bounces another one with his auto. So this card is absolutely clutch. Uh, it's great against Gogeta because the auto will bounce the five drop. So your opponent feels really safe because they tap three, drop the two, they play Gogeta, and they go, okay, well, he can't counterplay it. And then you drop hit and say, nah, put that back in your hand, Chief. It has been so, so clutch. Yeah, and forgetting that that card actually only costs two energy in your opponent's turn because of Planet Tuffle was, yeah. yeah. It's real nice. 3D Magic. I only run three because I replaced one with a Big Bang Attack. Uh, hey, you got a second one. Yeah, I got a second one finally. It only cost me $70. Uh, right. <laughs> but these cards pretty much do the exact same thing. It's that Big Bang draws you a card. And also the sparking is very nice when you tap out. Uh, I probably wouldn't go 3-2. I think the sparking is good enough to keep Dimension Magic at 3. Yeah, and $70 is a lot, too. Yeah. Uh, if I do end up getting another one, I'll probably cut a bean for another Revenge Big Bang. Two Mafuba, One drop Mafuba. It's really good. Don't need to say much more about it. Gohan, I bumped this up by one just because of a ruling clarification. Thank you, Bandai, for not explaining what your cards do when I email you. Uh, I originally ran three, bumped it up to four because this card is just a blue topo. Not much else to say. Speaking of blue topo, the actual blue topo, but for cards that have high energy cost. Uh, I side a second one of these just for the Gotenks matchup. Uh, I main board one. Just because it's relevant in some other matchups, uh, but if they have to if they want to swing with a card that's greater than their current energy cost, they have to drop two. I don't really run a unison outside of the Super Saiyan Four, so I don't get as permanent. But for two energy, this card is just is good enough to pay two energy for. Ready to rumble? I cut this down by one because I was seeing it way too much. Uh, I only want to see it around turn 4 and 5, just because I don't want to tap out on turn 3 to put them out there. Uh, just energy topo, blow up an energy every time your opponent wants to attack. And he's a blocker, which is yeah. kind of nuts. I don't like seeing either. That's why I made you discard it. Yeah, no, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, Body Snatcher, Overlord. Uh, it's one cost negate that untaps one with Planet Tuffle. Really good. Also really good. Bula. Uh, just a one-drop negate uh, servant, so she's a 15k attacker. Then you can pitch her to the bottom of the deck. Uh, I, I was re not really high on this combo until I started uh, playing it, because I was originally running Baby at 2 and then Boa at 3. But now that I've realized that you can turn 1, drop Baby, untap, then follow up with Bulma, or Bola, then activate Overlord on this Baby and start drawing cards early, it is been super clutch and especially helps out with uh, planet tuffle setups just to put an extra card on the bottom of the deck to raise up the rest of the cards make your staple and baby it's really really good saiyan slayer uh not much to say about it counter counter you can play it it doesn't counter the counter but you just get to play the card activate main look at the bottom card of your deck if it's a blue card with a counter skill you get to play it if it's equal or less to your energy. Really good for servant setups. Uh, so with baby, uh, you can or with the bully, you can pitch that to the bottom of the deck. Player again, activate on the two drop baby. Get a lot of cycling. Get a lot of cards. And final card, if I can pick it up, baby hatchack. This card's ridiculous. Don't need to say anything else about it. Just dumb how good this card is. Card wins games. Yes. <laughs> Except when uh, you're playing against Go Tanks. <laughs> Except for God. so, I, I told Bancroft at the beginning of this that I wanted to take this kind of in a different direction. Uh, instead of just saying, "Here's the list. Here's what you uh, what you need for the deck," uh, I want to pitch this as more of a. This is a very pilot centric deck. Uh, you really need to mold this to your play style. You need to change this to fit for you. So while my deck works very well for me. It might not work well for you. So in my deck, I don't use Bean all that often. You might love Bean in this deck, and you might need four of it. Uh, you might love the Baby Trunks Unison. I don't like it at all. I have not used it once. Every time I've had it in my hand, I've never wanted to play it. 
And even the games that I played it and even got off the minus five, I was still like, ah, it's not that good. I don't want to run it. Uh, so that might work out for you. But I just want to go over some other ideas that, um, just a couple, that might work very well for you. So uh, I don't know where my seven drops are. So Bancroft will put an image of the seven drop right here. I'm going to force you to do editing. He's looking at me. Uh, okay. I was going to say, do you want to? Guy. Yeah. Just so, a little hang on, just a little cut. Uh, this is a, another option. I've seen a lot of lists run this small package of the uh, Path of the Infinite into UI sign. I, it didn't really work for me all that well. Uh, I felt like it was really clunky, but the people that run it really swear by it. So I suggest checking it out if this is something that interests you. You do run a ton of four drops. Like Saiyan Slayer is a four drop. Obuni is a four drop. Ready to Rumble is a four drop. Uh, so you have no lack of four drops targets. Uh, I did actually consider not running this and just running Path to the Infinite just to pick up stuff like Obuni. So on turn, uh, let's say turn four, I drop a boonie, pass baby hatch, they pass, and then I activate mana a boonie, see the top card, shuffle, maybe get an untap, pick it up with uh, Path to the Infinite, and then play a boonie again and put more tokens on the field, then activate main again. Uh, so you can cycle it like that. It felt really clunky to me, so I never wanted to run it, but I would suggest checking this out if that interests you. Another card which really surprised me that it worked so well in this deck is Baby Vengeful Blow. So this was a card that didn't really see a lot of play in Malicious Machinations, but his auto does not specify a red baby. He only specifies a baby with 30k. So if you feel more comfortable running a lot more of the 5-drop Great 8 babies, this might be an option that you can run as a tech. So against decks like Green that have options to KO this on your turn, you could counter-counter like a... a, a uh, what's the name of the card? The 1-drop Green in the gate. Why does it always escape me? Dormant Potential. potential. The dormant Potential, yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that card always escapes me. So you counter-counter a Dormant Potential. They reply with a Frieza. They KO your baby, you can just plop this onto the field and then go, okay, I will absorb a Vegeta GT and play another baby on top of it. And it's not just KOing, it's re removed from battle area. Yeah, it's removed. So uh, this card can can be really relevant. Uh, I'd probably sideboard two of them just to have them in case I get into a matchup where it's very removal heavy, especially on my turn. Uh, that's something to look out for. I haven't seen a lot of people running this card. And finally, uh, Mew Ancient. Oh man, that uh, card. <laughs> Such a powerful card. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know why I don't see more people sideboarding this card. Or even mainboarding. I think this is a mainboard staple. There's not a lot almost. of psychic decks though, is the problem. Yeah, that, that's that's the issue. I think it combos really well off of, where is he, Saiyan Slayer? Yeah, Saiyan Slayer is probably can, the best way to do it. You can bottom deck this and then Saiyan Slayer him out. And, you know, since Mew kind of does, like, mind control stuff and Baby does mind control stuff, they fuse, and then you can pull out your big ape. It's the best way of doing yeah. it. It, like, I don't know. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a really good combo, and I think you should look into it if you have any interest. For sure. Yeah, but I encourage you to play around with this build. Uh, test out different cards. Test out some weird stuff. I don't think anybody's really cracked Baby yet. And I think when he when somebody does this, this leader is really going to shine, uh, especially in the current meta where uh, counters are so 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 prevalent. But that's it. Awesome, thanks, Jimmy. And if you guys, if you guys didn't check out our duel, it came out yesterday. The things appearing on the bottom of the screen, and probably after Jimmy gives his, Jimmy say your goodbyes first. I uh, um, thanks for thanks to Fluffer letting me borrow this. Uh, Bancroft is not allowed within 100 feet of a school. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, <laughs> I told you to stop with this shit. Okay, Lil' Bud is not uh, allowed within 100 feet of a school. Because I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> if it burns when you pee, it's probably the clap. And now our duel's on the screen, because with that all being said, thanks for tuning in, like always. Know your cards. Or read your cards, know your plays, <laughs> and like always, fuck